we look at this gorgeous frame. There's so much character in this frame, y'all. That's why I said, no, I am not painting it. I love all those colors of it. Oh my gosh. So I got this frame at an auction. It was a snowy, rainy, cold auction. And the guy's like, first pick, somebody just grab some for $2. Okay. And this was the only one that I picked. So I want to do one of my music wreaths on it, but I don't want my music wreath, hymnal wreaths to be overpowering. So I actually picked up these cardboard like forms from Hobby Lobby to be able to glue them on but first off I need to remove this existing hardware that is making it stick up. Hi guys welcome to the channel this is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab thank you for hopping on and checking out what I am up to. So in today's video the search for secondhand finds items to resell items to make over has now expanded in our few years of doing this into auctions. So in today's video, I am sharing with you three of my recent auction finds that I am making over using no paint. Okay, well maybe minimal for some detail work, but other than that, we are keeping these beautiful found items with all their wonderful character. I have it flipped over I'm gonna give it one more cleaning you know you you clean that wood that's been sitting around in somebody's barn for a while and then you're gonna give it a, one more cleaning before because like I said I am not not going to paint this now this little cardboard like form is $1.99. I'm sure you could cut one out from a cardboard box, but as a reseller on eBay, I don't cut out my cardboard boxes. <laughs> so yeah, $1.99, that's pretty minimal cost. And now you could use whatever type of paper you want. You can print off music sheets, book sheets, story sheets. I just have a load of hymnal books that people have given me. I've gotten free at garage sales um that are very worse for wear and as you see these pages are just all out of a book so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to cut off those that three ring binder holes and then i'm going to cut them in half and then cut the half in half because i don't need very big pieces to make this wreath So to start the wreath, you're going to be using a hot glue gun. I just have the Gorilla Glue stick that I use. I have a, just, I grabbed a pencil. This just happens to be one of the carpenter's pencils that's a little bit flatter edge. Since this isn't a round object, I thought, well, I'm in the shop. I'll just grab this one. <laughs> so a little bit of glue. And I'm going to start in the inside and I'm just going to hold it. And my original hymnal wreath that I made, I got the Dollar Tree styrofoam that has that shiny, but it really held on to this cardboard really quickly. So this wreath is not going to take long at all. So just a little dab of glue. You go ahead and hold it up against your form do a couple second counts until the glue starts to dry or it soaks into the cardboard form and then you can remove your pencil and just work around that inside and then now next i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to do that same thing but i'm going to start working on my outside That I have my outside I'm going to go ahead and lay one right on the top. I can go back and do fillers but for right now I'm going to butt them. I like my wreaths to be very full. Sure. 
And here's what I said. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to get into that space where one's going up, one's going out, and I'm just going to go ahead and attach a, another one in there. Wherever you need one, you know, you just, you just keep doing it until you love it. Before attaching it to my frame, I want to go ahead and add some hangers. Now, I like to, one side's a little bit shorter than the other side, so I like to give people different options. So I'll go ahead and attach one hanger going vertical, one hanger going horizontal, just so in case it kind of opens up your buyers if they have a space that they're trying to fill. I don't know if I could have envisioned a different wreath for this. No, if I'm not putting any backing, I knew what size of wreath I wanted to make to fill the space. You're going to be able to see all the way through the wall, but not really too awful much. And it's pretty simple since it's paper and it's lightweight. I'm just going to use some hot glue on the top and the bottom where it's touching to glue it in place. Now I got this little footstool at a different auction and I picked this one up for $5. It was one of those pieces that nobody else wanted. And it was probably because the top was not attached. But once I saw the legs of it, I'm like, oh, okay, I want it for $5. Thank you very much. You're coming home with me. And I thought, oh, I can reupholster you. This is just a simple little cushion. So yes, you can tell it's been reupholstered. <laughs> so the fun of, yes, you need one of these handy dandy tools. It's just, it makes it easier to re, re, remove staples. And luckily the first layer, y'all, did you hear that? The first layer didn't have too many staples in it. If I resold mid-century modern, that fabric is gorgeous. And I actually didn't throw that fabric away, I believe. I think I did keep this little piece of fabric in my hoard because I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so pretty. But the problem with putting the two layers of fabric on this piece, that footstool was actually made that the wood is what kept it tight, is what kept it tight. So adding two layers of fabric is what made it not stay attached it, it would it was flopping so actually the fabric was too thick and it needed to be removed but i was impressed how beautiful this cushion i thought i'm gonna have to put foam on it i'm gonna have to put batting on it but no i can actually reuse it and i am a go-to a drop cloth fabric i always have a drop cloth fabric and a hand that's already pre-washed pre-dried and ready to use so i just cut it off to size size of what i needed and now i'm cutting off my corners i always do a little bit of a corner i check that corner to make sure it's still going to co cover up the bottom but that way you don't get that bunched up fabric at those corners. I'm just gonna be using a staple gun and what I like to do is I like to fold over my edge to have a nice clean edge. You know, drop cloth a lot of times likes to fray so this actually helps that. And I'm sorry if I hit my camera a few times. I have a rolling cart that I kind of use as my stage <laughs> for you all. So sometimes when I'm putting pressure on this, um, I'm moving my cart accidentally also.
that we have all four sides, it's time to do our corners. So what I do is I fold in that center corner and put a staple. And now I'm going to make a cute little package and fold it. Since I cut off the, all the fabric, all I have to do is one little fold over and it's just a nice, clean, clean little corner. I don't want a bunched up fabric to push it where it needs to go because this is going to actually be sitting right on wood. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that excess off and make sure that everything's stapled down nice and tight. And now we have a cute little cushion. Oh my gosh, I, there's just something about drop cloth fabric, y'all. It's just like the perfect color. It's such a neutral, but see see how it sits on these little four leg that it needed to be nice and flat. And then it has that little bit of a lip um, that's supposed to hold it in. So the wood's supposed to touch the wood. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of reassurance and do some little Velcro pieces right there. Just, just for a little bit extra. And now that I have my blank slate, yo, oh yeah, you know, I said, I know this was a no paint video, but uh, it's going to have a little bit, just a little bit of paint, y'all. So this is, this is a JRV stencil, Jamie Ray Vintage stencil. And as you can tell, I have used it a lot, but it is one of the stencils that when I use it, whatever item I put on it, it would cushion old caddy it sells so I love that it actually fits this little cushion so I taped off where I know that I am center I'm going to use some spray adhesive on the back of the stencil that way it will stick to my fabric and then now I'm going to go around and make sure that everything is taped down in place I've got to go with the curve of the cushion and make sure that it is down as tight as I can get it so the paint that I'm using is Apple Barrels Multi-Use. I use this on fabric. This is my go-to paint for fabric because it just, it adheres to the fabric very, very well. Once I heat it up, it's washable. I have cushions of my own that I have done and I've been able to clean them with a carpet cleaner and the paint does not come off. So this is, this is that's always a huge thing when you're figuring out what paint to do a stencil on fabric. And then I'm just using a Jamie Ray Vintage stencil brush and the dry brush technique. A little, 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 little bit of paint on here. Um, since my stencil has been used in the booth, some of my pointies of like my end here, I really had to work, work it down and make sure that it was stuck. So I don't want to have, um, too much paint on. I can go over twice if I need to, but I don't want to have so much paint that it soaks in the fabric and bleeds. Was well worth the time to take your time with just a little bit of paint. So now I need to heat up the paint to make it become a one with this fabric. So right now that paint is hard and crusty. Now I have a piece of parchment paper and a no steam iron and for like 30 seconds or so I'm going to run it over that lettering and what that does is makes that lettering bond with the fabric and it makes the lettering also nice and soft. So we've got it being permanently on there now. Mm -hmm. 
And my final step is I always like to give it a good coating of Scotch Guard. So I like to protect that fabric, especially since we have a light drop cloth fabric. We all know how dirty light colors could get. So it's nice to have that it's Scotch Guarded. And oh yeah, I ran across um, a couple cans at a Goodwill for 209 back in the day. So love that, love that, love that. So yes. And when it comes to Scotch Guard, it you need to just like spray paint, you need to be mask on in a well ventilated area if you're not outside. So my final project of the three, oh, I think this is the world's biggest Lazy Susan. I don't know. I'm not checking the Goodness Book of World's Records, but <laughs> yes, look how big this is. And I really wanted to get this done for the holidays, but uh, you know, I just did not get to it. So I'm like, hey, maybe for Super Bowl parties <laughs> if I'm going to resell this, but it is huge. It is a, I, I, I did not measure it, but look at how big this is. But it's that outdated, orangey, overly polyurethane with bubble finish. So lots of sanding is going to be going on next. <laughs> so I'm going to start off by sanding with an 80 grit sandpaper and just start. Um, it's, it's beautifully handmade and I don't know if you can see the drips and the bubbles. And so it's almost like I have to work in layers to get through the polyurethane. So when people ask me in my comments down below, is there a difference between polyurethane and polycrylic? Polycrylic usually self levels. I have not ever had any bubbling with polycrylic or any running with polycrylic. So I don't even own any polyurethane in our shop at all. But I do have to admit that I use polyacrylic from a spray can so I'm sure applying it with a brush is a bit different and maybe you get the bubbles and the drippage and that's why I just choose to spend just a little bit up for my finished coat. Mm -hmm. that I have all the orangey stain off both sides and the side sides <laughs> um there is a hole so there's a um yeah it goes in so if somebody wants to use this as a charcuterie board don't I probably slaughtered it y'all don't don't give me down the hyphenated in the comments below because I can't say that but anyway if you want to put food on this I don't want there to be a hole when you go to wipe this off. So I'm going to be filling this in. This is some brown Starbond CA glue. And so I'll put a couple coats on and I'm going to use their sprayer, their accelerator to dry it. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm getting it filled all the way to the top, along with any of the knots that are on here. You would think that the stain and the polyurethane um, would have filled those in, but it didn't. So I could fill those gaps. I want to make sure that no no water or no food can get into these spots. I wanna make sure that it's nice and level. And then now that I have them all filled in, the knots, this little hole area that didn't go all the way through, it just, it was just there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth this down. So I waited to actually do my second sanding. So you start off with your 80 grit to remove product and then now I need to have it nice and smooth. So then I'll work up from a 150 to a 220 to make sure that my wood is nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. 
So my original thought on this piece is I was just going to wax it and leave it that natural color, but there just isn't any bling to it. It's just, it's just a light pine piece. So I decided to go ahead um, after I got it clean from sanding and I'm just going to antique it wax to give it a little bit more character. So I'm just, yep, just pour some on there and get it worked in. And yes, it's, the way that I'm going to finish it, it will still be food safe. That is like the number 10 question I will get when I do anything that people know food is going to go into or onto. Is it food safe? Anytime the product is made, so when it cures, if you can look it up on, you can Google it, y'all. You can Google it and waxes your polyacrylic. Once it's cured, once it's dry, it is food safe. Now why my Waverly Wax is still wet, the Antiquing Wax the Brown, I'm going in with some Black Jolie Wax just around that outer edge. Now when I sanded that, you know those pine pieces get that rough edges. It, it's um, There's like a hue difference from where it sanded and took this, the stain differently. But I actually like to give it almost that burnt effect, that aged, you know, where our hands touch a piece of wood over time, it gets that aged patina on the edges. And that's what I'm going for with this black wax around, just around the edges. I'll get that all put in, I'll feather it into the board itself, and then just slightly run my rag over to blend it all in. And then I do want to add some handles. I have some handles in our stash that are already black. Perfect. That way if you do put a whole bunch of food or you want to carry it, it'll be a little bit easier having some handles. But I want to add some wording. So I love to search on Pinterest. And if I'd love to see a raise of hands of everybody that just searches for inspiration on Pinterest. So I ran across this saying and it's actually from a stencil company a lady that resells um out of canada so i am using her wording um i like the di i always like different fonts together and i know it's a coffee theme but you could leave this on your island um if you wanted to and put some decor on it and then use it when you wanted to use it for your food and entertain for guests. So it's nice to have a little bit of wording on it. So I just picked out the few different fonts and then I wanted to find a cup that kind of matched hers in her stencil itself and then put it all together. So sometimes when I'm creating, I'm looking on my phone uh, on the Pinterest when I'm on my computer. So I, it was kind of a backwards of trying to show you how I created the stencil, but just pick out the different fonts that match what her little picture was and then um yeah and then and then remembering to group it all together so it cuts out all the same on my Cricut um yeah I love this machine I have to admit to you all that I actually did order some of her stencils. I don't know how long they'll take to get here from Michigan, um, but look for some more videos. She had some awesome stencils. I love stencils, especially because you don't have to keep cutting them out and weeding them, <laughs> weeding them like this. I mean, it's nice to have it size appropriate to your project that you're doing, but it's also nice just like that cushion to be able to find a stencil that you love and that for me resells and people like to be able to use it over and over again. 
But there's always that fine line, like how many times do you use it over and over again? For me, I only tried to have one object stenciled in that at a time in my booth. So I'm not like, hey, I bought this stencil and I did 20 items in this stencil kind of thing. And since there's um, planks of wood, you know, going across, this is really easy to apply. I, I mean, I may do a little bit of measuring, but the stencil fills up a good generous portion of it. So yeah, and then a funny, funny thing is, is when I was cutting my stencil out and I'm like, why does my E end up with my S? I didn't realize that I cut my co my company um letters off accidentally so i had to tape those back together oops there's so many oops moments in crafting <laughs> i you know i i wish i could show you perfection of how an item just you know flipping an item just went so smoothly and everything just went the way it was supposed to be <music> Like to cut really close to my letters on my stencil that way it's easier for me to make sure visually that I'm going I'm level it's just a personal preference and so I have to add a little bit of masking tape so I don't accidentally like right now I'm just using um, a makeup sponge to apply my paint I've got my ready to use black onyx paint which is a permanent paint um, on my makeup sponge dry technique just a little bit of paint on there it's better to go over multiple times and have it too much paint and then make it a mess but this wood wood this pine wood is so sucky <laughs> so it's just sucking the paint right in i should have did, did a close-up that you could really tell so i do go over this twice but yeah just a little bit of paint a little bit of patience and yeah maybe you can tell a little bit more when i'm doing the coffee cup itself how it's just soaking right in so each one of the lines on the stencil was a different font the image was a different image and the national brewers co i actually typed it out straight and then i used my curve feature to give it that little bit of a curve <music> Now, before applying the handles, I'm going to do a few coats of the polycrylic. Yep, that'll make it completely food safe. And as I said, that paint was being soaked and I want to make sure I have a good seal on this piece. So three coats of polycrylic is usually what I do, especially since I spray it. Then I will do a light sanding with some steel wool. And now we can apply the handles. So I'm just going to pre-drill some holes. Um, just, I am just loving how this is coming together. Yep. So pre-drill, put my screws in. I'm using black screws and oh, oh my gosh, we have just a beautiful, the world's largest lazy Susan. Okay, so yes, it was minimal, minimal paint, y'all, minimal paint, but oh my gosh, that frame was gorgeous. I could not cover that up. Just that simple hymnal wreath. Oh, my heart. 
<laughs> and then that little footstool. I'm like, y'all don't want that? I will take that. Oh my gosh. So yeah, and I, I was so super excited when I did not have to actually change out the padding. It was in pristine. And then adding too much thickness was what was preventing it from being the way that it was supposed to be made. And then, I don't know if that is the world's largest Lazy Susan, but holy cow, it was a big one. And I can't wait to get the stencils from this company. I have to look the company back up, y'all. I, I, I'll try to link it down in the description description below because sometimes I'm doing my closing before I do all my descriptions. So I'll see if I can find that um, and share it with you all so you can look at her wonderful. But remember, it's a Canadian company. So you do have to pay a little bit up and then a little shipping takes a lot longer. But I'm super excited. I love stencils that I get to reuse over and over again. So again, let me know down in the comments below if I have inspired you to look at secondhand finds in a new way in which were the items that I made over today were your favorite. And if you are part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!